Yeah, good morning everyone. Jim here. It's uh, February. I think it's family day today, the February 15th. And going out for a quick check of my uh, wool snares and I got a few goodies in my bag that I want to, my sleigh there that I want to throw out there. Some noose and skunks that I collected over the year and I'll throw them out to attract the wolves. So follow along today and see how it goes. So here's another uh, deer kill on the lake. So the wolves have been feeding pretty good this year. It's the second fresh one that I've seen in a while there. But uh, not too much left. Somebody probably picked up the scraps here, but they're pretty easy prey when they get them out on the ice like this. So you can see there was quite a battle that went on here, but the wolves got them. Out today with my daughter Casey. It's family day, we're doing a run. I brought a bunch of skunks to throw out at the wolf dump here. My, uh, my summer job is uh, nuisance wildlife control, so we catch a lot of nuisance skunks. They're no good for for uh, for fur, but they're good for smell in the bush here, like this. And uh, this is a big uh, wolf, wolf dump we got going here. So I just spread them out, throw them around, try to get something going here. Starting to be a lot of a lot of tracks and a lot of activity here now, so it's all good. What is that? Okay. What is that? That's uh, a part of a beaver. So. Anyways, that's good. So we'll we'll do that, get it going, and I got another dump we're gonna go to here next. So. Put them up between the two ducks. Put a fresh lure. Wait, get ready for the next one. <laughs> In winter time, it's really hard. It's slow. The trapping slows down. It takes like 10 days to do what you can do one day in the fall. So winter trapping is not quite the same as uh, fall trapping when it's not above zero and whatnot. So when it's everything's frozen like this, you got to keep your bait fresh and you got to keep luring and hope for a warm spell. And then everything moves and then you you make a pretty good catch. One of the things I carry on my machine all the time is a set of loppers and uh, I like the uh, extension type ones. So then I can reach off the trail. Oh, I caught myself. But uh, what's nice about them is you can just reach out and you can trim your trail the way you want. And, uh, we got a lot of stuff. My buddy Frank was asking the other day what loppers are, so that's what the loppers are. And uh, they're really good at trimming your trails down. So, lots of people go up and down the trails, never cut a branch. I hate getting whipped in the face or 
sometimes what happens is the branch is big enough you detour off the trail and sometimes you get stuck so a little bit of trail maintenance every time you go out works pretty good and with the extension type you're able to reach a little bit further in and get it off the trail the normal ones are about that long but with the extension you get the extra couple of feet there so just to give you an idea how well they work so like I said I prefer I prefer this type of make too these are uh, Fiskers they're guaranteed for life I was using the yard work stuff that can tire sole but it's junk so uh, I think I broke about 20 pairs of the cheaper ones and I've only broken one pair of these really better ones here so works really good. So if I'm going down the trail and I'm working and I'm using them lots, I just put them between my handlebars like that. And then they're at every time I have a branch that I want to get out of the way, I can quickly grab them and use them. Otherwise, I store them on the side of my machine like this. And they don't fall off and they're good. So just kind of a, a way to do it. I got to tighten up that strap a little bit, but uh, just a way to carry it and they're easy to access if I want them. Away I go again. There are scraps when I'm doing up my beavers and whatnot. There's always scrap fat and everything and pieces of of uh, beer, so I, I use them just to throw them on the trail. There you go. I keep salt in the mine here. Sooner or later, we're going to have a pay streak. The wolves will show up, and because there's so much feed here, they'll they'll spend enough time, and I'll catch a few of them. I have about 30 snares here, and I won't really check them too hard until I see tracks where the wolves will come in, and then I'll give them a good check. But until they hit the dump, I just keep looking to make sure, and I keep coming by every three or four or five days and having a look and uh, once the pack comes through and hits it and I see tracks then I'll really look for it to see if I caught anything but otherwise I kind of just always look off the trail and I stay away from my snares but I, I have them marked and then I'm looking to see if there's any any sign or any activity of the wolves being here yet but they haven't come in yet so next trip So I'm gonna, I wanna show you guys how I hang a snare. And how I hang a snare is probably different from what a lot of guys do and, and, pro and probably how I set it up. But I'm using an Alberta Power uh, spring on it. Marty Seneker's uh, setup. And I have a, a locking uh, uh, snare, snare support that I use. Now, not everything I do is what I learned. I've learned off a lot of good guys. The one fellow I trap with quite a bit, Dave, has all kinds of great ideas that I steal all the time and use. Um, 
I've I've learned things from uh, from uh, Trapper Gord. I've learned things from my my best friend Kenny. There's a lot of different ways to do things, and, and what I try to do all the time is adapt to something that's really good. So what I want to show you is using a drill to hang a snare and how quickly and, and easy it is. So I have a, a an eight foot snare here. I have a barrel swivel on it, and uh, I got a piece of wire around my neck for the support. And you'll see how quickly we can do this. So just follow me in here, and we'll see. I'll I'll, uh, I'll look for a suitable spot. Out here a little bit so we can see. So what I'll look for a suitable spot where I want to hang my snare. So that's a good sized tree. I'll take my drill. I'll put a hole in it in the tree. Okay, that's for my support wire. Now I cut the wire a little bit longer than necessary, but I'll feed this into the hole. Take my pliers, push it in tight so it gives a good support. Then I can cut it to the length I want in a second here after I hang my snare. My snare works. I'm catching it, not so much on entanglement, so I'm not worried so much about the little trees around me. I like to hang them relatively high. There's a breakaway on this, so if I catch an incidental, non-target, it'll uh, release. I want to release it on my finger because it hurts like hell. There we go. Okay. You can do this, of course, a lot faster if you're not talking, but in order to show you, I got to talk a little bit. So here's my loop. I open it up to what I want. I figure out where I want my wire to support it. Cut it off. Okay, with this type of uh, locking uh, so snare support, it actually locks. You turn it until you hear it, you feel it tighten up, and it's locked. And you can see I can just adjust this the way I want. Keep creating a nice big loop, and that's as easy as that. Now the last thing, the last thing I do here, and this is important, is mark your snares. I learned this from uh, Trapper Gord, Gordy. He used uh, put, uh, clothespins, but he would uh, buy them at Walmart or whatever and paint them fluorescent orange. I'm a little bit too lazy for that, so I found some uh, blue ones, because blue really stands out in the bush. And then the last thing I do is I, I just take it like that and I mark it. So if you look around in my snare sets, you can count out my snares by the amount of blue uh, clothespins that are hanging like that. Wolves don't look up. It's not really something natural for them to do is to be running around with their heads. They more have their nose to the ground when they're working because they're, they make their living by their feet, by walking, and by what they smell with their nose. So their nose is planted to the ground. But you can see the snare will fall down before it'll fall off the snare support. So it's a really good system. That I learned from my buddy Dave Green. It's an excellent, excellent uh, way to do it. I used to use it with a piece of uh, plastic gas tubing, which was fine, but it would fall off sometimes. So this is way superior. So like I said earlier, the methods that I use are, are not just mine. They're an amalgamation of probably 10 different guys that I've uh, been out with or learned from. And uh, it's never, never uh, too uh, soon or too early to try something different and, and make it work even better. So. You know, I've already have hardly a piece of wire there for snare support. One thing I learned from another fella back in, in my Timmins trapping days was from Yvon Arsenal. He always said his wolf snares bare hands. I don't bother to boil my snares. You can do that if you want, that, that works. But uh, you're always going to have a certain amount of scent out. You're, you're shedding skin cells 
every second that you're somewhere and you're not going to escape that the cold and just the the air and that'll dissipate uh, your smell i mean i don't put my hands in gasoline and, and whatnot or get out gas and oil on them but i mean i try to i've only gotten wearing gloves today because it's uh, about 21 below today so it's it's just just kind of uh, comfort more than anything else but i'll set them with my bare hands and i've had success so some guys swear by by bowling them by wearing gloves and that works i'm not saying it doesn't work i'm just showing you what works for me so hopefully you like this there you go you want to go trapping too eh too bad you don't listen and you'll run away oh